as if we were really on the surface of Mars. You usually do, there's just a particular format to talk to. So, so look, look for your email. Today reminds me very much of almost 10 years ago when we were preparing for Mars Polar Lander and we were doing these same type of exercises and they were not going well at all. Okay, we have a, um, a conflict in, uh, we already have a conflict in that they were very frustrating. Um, today is a huge advance over what we were able to do 10 years ago. Aren't we upping the data rate? Okay, so then this can... We haven't heard from the spacecraft team yet. What's the allocation? Oh, um, let's see. By fiat, we did the go-no-go -no -go with Odyssey, so we should plan on this being a 128k pass. This is a virtual expedition to Mars. Yes. As of Nice. I told you Flash would be the Achilles heel. We are running um, all of our observations on a computer that simulates the spacecraft to a very high degree of accuracy. So when we send commands up to our simulated spacecraft, it reacts just the way the real spacecraft will react. A replica spacecraft in a simulated landing location is out of sight and behind closed doors at the operations center. This will be used for testing commands and communication, both after landing, as well as during realistic simulations like this. Today, uh, we received data in the morning showing our first pictures of the, the site in front of the lander where we could dig. And so we went through the process of um, putting all that data through the system to calculate a three-dimensional terrain model um, so that we can plan out where to take our robotic arm uh, to scoop up some dirt. And then we, um, after looking at those pictures, the science team uh, weighed the pros and cons of different spots of where we would dig, worked with the robotic arm team as to what's safe to do, and then um, from there we baselined a plan uh, to go acquire a sample. I started back with Viking Lander 1 and Lander 2 in 1976. We didn't have these tools. Everything was done by paper and handing things back and forth. And the, the, the process, the interaction with people is very much the same. It's the system end to end, and the system includes people fundamentally, but also the tools and the spacecraft and the whole flow. Like most complex um, uh, machines, very few people understand how all the different parts of it work. And so those very few people have to work very hard um, and long hours between now and landing uh, in order to, to pull it off. So burn out, burn out of the, of the people. But they're a great bunch of folks. If anybody can pull it off, this group can. When we get closer to actually doing this on Mars, then the pressure of realizing that each day on Mars is costing you $4 million and you don't want to lose one of them, and they're very valuable. It's not just money. The money is just one way to look at value. But the truth is, um, it's very difficult to get to Mars safely. And once you do, you want to take full advantage of that opportunity, and we will. Human testing complete, all eyes focus again on the next major milestone, the launch. We have one more major review before launch, and launch is in, I think it was 16, 16 days to launch. Uh, we may not go the first opportunity, so it might be 17, 18, 19, I don't know. But the probability is that we will launch in the first four days of our launch window. So right now, the spacecraft is being put onto the third stage of the launch vehicle, and this is happening in a clean room about 10 miles away from the launch pad. And once it's attached to the third stage, then the whole unit spacecraft plus third stage is transported over to the launch vehicle and raised up to the top, which is about 13 stories high, and a, a crane pulls it up and places it on top of the rocket. So I'm a little worried because any accident at this point uh, is unrecoverable. Of course, once we launch, the, uh, even today, right now, we can't change the hardware. It's done. From the beginning, the controlled explosion of rocket launches has always been quite a spectacle. Not just for those close to the mission either. For the media, for the public, for those intimately involved with the mission, and their support team. This group around here, this is my family that's come down to uh, share the launch with us. When you put so much time and effort into something like a planetary space mission, it's a big part of your life. It's been four years since we've uh, uh, been working on Phoenix. 
and it's it's really important to me to be able to share it with everybody here. And we'll definitely see manatees and things. We have some very interesting.